In the last 12 months, we've been really spoiled with all of these new digital FPV goggles. Whilst they've all brought new features and capabilities, not everything is actually an improvement, and specifically, the Dominator HD goggle and the DJI goggles have pretty much useless anti-fog performance. In fact, I'd go as far as to say the DJI's basically don't have any anti-fogging at all, and whilst the Avatar does have anti-fogging, it really doesn't do much. The HD Zero goggle, on the other hand, doesn't suffer from this issue. It has some of the best anti-fog performance I've seen on the market, and in fact, the fans on these goggles are so strong, they will literally dry your eyes out to mummification if you wanted to do so. Today, we're going to be doing some mods on these though, the Dominator HD goggle or the Fat Shark HD goggle, which is identical. And what we're going to do is try and see if we can modify these goggles to improve the anti-fog performance. So what we're going to do is tear these goggles down. I'm going to walk you through how the anti-fog actually works on these, and then we're going to try some modifications and see if we can improve it. Now, just to be clear up front, by doing this, I am going to void any warranty that I have on these goggles. I actually bought these goggles with the support of the Patreons on my channel. I was not sent these for free. So modifying these is obviously going to have an effect on that warranty. And before you do anything like this, you should take into account that anything you do do may impact any support that you get in the future. Anyways, let's get on with it. Let's tear them down and let's take a look at how the anti-fog actually works first of all. Now, just to take a quick look at the anti-fog setup that is on these goggles. On the top, we have this little slider that has a big fan and a little fan, one on each side. And this allows you to adjust the amount of airflow through the mask into the eye area. And the way it works is there's a little fan on the side. We'll take a look at that a bit more in the middle. The air goes through inside. This duct allows it through. So you have a baffle that lets it through more or less. And it's directed then down to each eye through this area here, through that duct. Now, when I got these goggles, the little foam pieces actually went a lot further up, and I did think they might be affecting the airflow, so I actually snipped them back a bit to see if it made any difference, but unfortunately, it didn't. Now, this is the bit that directs the flow towards the eyes, but if we take the face mask off, give it a pull, move it down, you can then see there inside the actual duct piece, and you can see that I move that, and that is opening those holes or blocking those holes. So it's fully this way, fully to the left, that allows the air through. And then that is directed in this part of the mask down to each eyepiece. Now, just before I move forward, I do want to say I do have a full teardown video on these goggles. I'm not going to show you how to take these apart in this one, but I will link to that video in the description that does walk you through how to take these goggles apart, what's actually inside. And whilst we are going to be looking inside today, that video is a lot more detailed on the actual process on how to do it. Now I've removed the front panel off the goggles, we've disconnected the LCDs and the wires to the board. And what I want to do is show you the airflow path for the front anti-fog. So what you've got is this fan here on the side that draws air in through that Fat Shark logo, and that blows it out at a little vent at the top, which we'll take a look at in a minute. On the top of the PCB, there's like this plastic duct that covers the whole of the top with a little slit over here that you can see there that the airflow comes out of. So the idea is it blows air in through this duct and then out at the front here. And that then is expelled into the front area of the goggles, which is then picked up by the fan that is in the front plate here. And that expels it out the bottom. So you've got a push and pull setup with regards to the airflow. Now that duct is split sort of 75-25 with 75% of the air going into the duct over the top of the PCB and 25% of it going into a little channel at the back that comes out to this area here. And then you've just got this little baffle that slides at the top to open and close that channel. The issue that I see on these is that not enough air is actually going into that 25% channel simply because of the duct setup. And that's why you get the weak airflow coming through into that anti-fog area. Now, if I just carefully slide out the PCB and place that to the side, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. And if I just turn it, you can then see in there, it's not really easy to show you. Let me just get a torch. Okay, so if I just show you in there now with a torch, you can see that duct that comes out the top of the fan and that blows air horizontally along the top from there. So that it's the duct is right there 
along across the top of the board. Then the board itself has this plastic duct as I mentioned earlier and then if I just flip it up like that you can see that there are two channels that that fan duct goes into. You've got the main channel there and then the back channel, the main channel just goes into the open area over the top here. So it blows air over the top of the chipsets that have the shielding on and then it comes out that little gap there at the front. And then that other channel goes along the back and that meets the plastic at the back of the goggles and that is what pushes the ear out to the eye area. The basics are in this though, there really isn't enough airflow getting into this back section of the channel and that is what is causing the restriction of the airflow that goes through for the anti-fogging. Now that ducting is easily removable, it just comes off with these two screws. There's one on either side that hold it in place and that will then reveal the inside of the duct and there really isn't much going on in here. I then just release that, we can flip the board over, we can see we've just got our metal can on the top, under this is some heat compound and obviously what that's doing is transferring the heat into this area here and then you can see the channel there, so here you will see where the air comes in, you can see the two areas are separated, so this is that area there that goes over the top of the board and out at the front there and then the back channel is what pushes the air out to the eye area. Now, what I'm going to do is do a slight modification on this and I'm in two minds of which way to do it. One option is to actually look at removing some of this plastic here so more of the air that enters this channel would be available to go through the eye area and maybe restrict that opening a little bit so forcing more out into the eyes and less out of the front here. Alternatively, I'm actually tempted to do another mod where we actually put like a, a piece of plastic along here. So what I mean is direct this airflow into that channel completely, into that back channel, and then release that airflow here, but with a piece of plastic pointing it that way, forcing it back that way, so it goes around and then out the duct at the front. So what that means is you'd be putting an airflow going through here, along this channel where most of it then would have the opportunity to go out to the eye area but if you didn't want it to go out to the eye area it would then overspill back into this area here if it was then pointing back that way to force it around this way to pick up some of the heat from the chipset and then back out the front here. I think the first thing I'll do though is try the simplest option which is remove a piece of plastic here and then put some restriction on this duct here and see how that performs. Okay, so what we've done is taken a chunk out of the plastic down there, so that is going to help allow more airflow to be able to get into this area, and then we're going to slightly restrict the airflow coming out at this end with some tape, which I've taken about just under a quarter of that duct out, so hopefully that will give us an improvement in the overall airflow behaviour. Okay, so I've put the goggles back together and I've had a bit of a play and there's no difference. Removing that bit of plastic there has done nothing as far as I can see to improve the airflow. Now, I've been having a bit more of a think about this and I'm going to try a couple of other things. So what we're going to do is tear them back down again and then we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, now after a bit more testing and messing around, I think I've pretty much got it. So what I ended up doing is actually removing that back area the directly behind the duct that goes into the front of the goggles. I did originally try removing it there and it really did nothing so that bit there I wouldn't worry about I would just leave that and what I've ended up doing is taking that whole chunk out that goes directly behind the vent and I've then restricted the airflow output at the front here and that is definitely providing more airflow through the eyepiece. What I'm going to do now is get it back assembled and I'll come back and give you some thoughts on what it's like. Okay, so having put them back together and done some testing, I can definitely say there is more air now making it through that front duct towards the eyes. So what I've done is remove that baffle going along the back. So now all of the air that goes into that channel is going to go either out the hole at the front or towards the eyepiece and because I've restricted the air going out of that front area it's pushing more out of here. Now obviously doing this 
adds risk because what you're doing is restricting the airflow. However, I've done a bunch of testing here in the last few hours on the bench and it's not overheating. I've tested it a maximum output. I've tested it left on for about an hour and it's been fine. The goggles temps are staying exactly where I'd expect them to be. And there's definitely more air moving through these ducts here. If I put my finger down here, I can very gently feel the airflow, but where I really noticed the difference is when I had the face mask off. So if I actually just remove this a minute, it's not the easiest thing to remove when it's turned on. Let me just get it off. I can now feel the air coming out of there a lot more than I could before. And hopefully that's going to improve the overall anti-fog performance. Now, it's a little while later, and whilst that did work, I've had a chance now to design my own air duct, making some of the changes that I think will actually improve the overall performance. Now, I've done this differently to how the original air duct worked, and the idea was to actually move airflow through the duct along towards the eyepiece at the front to allow it to have that anti-fog, but then any overspill then gets pushed further down and follow down channels, allowing it to pick up heat off the top of the PCB, and then again exit out at the front. Now as always with these things you end up going through a development process. We started with the original duct which I modified, then I 3D printed a test duct with the idea was for the air to come into a whole large channel and then be diverted towards the anti-fog mechanism but anything that wasn't used could then get reflected up around here, pushed back that way to pick up some air and then head out of this little duct over here. I wasn't happy with how that performed, so then I started looking at this, where we drag most of the air through into this area here, which again goes into the anti-fog area. If that was open, it would allow it to escape via there, but what didn't escape would then go down this channel here, around picking up heat from the top of the heat sink, and around and then out of here, and then the additional bit of air from the fan being blown into there as well, where those two would meet and push out that way. And then I just did various development cycles of them until we get to the stage here where it is fitted, it's on the module, it fits lovely. I had to extend it a little bit more there, and you can see now that we've just got that area there for it to go into. And this is the final design, which I'm going to go on and test. Here you can see the new duct installed and the goggles are back together. So we've got that ear exit over there. I actually wish I'd have made that a little bit smaller and I probably will do a modification of that on the final STL file that I will share in this video. But in my test so far, it absolutely is making a difference in my opinion. There is more air coming out of that vent there than there was before and I'm going to do a lot more testing with it now to see how it performs, but it's definitely better in my tests than it was originally. Now, it's been a little while since I did that mod, and overall, I do think it's made a difference. If you're interested in trying it for yourself, there will be a link to the STL file in the description, although I'm going to say now, I don't recommend anyone does either of these mods, whether it be cutting the plastic or fitting my new plastic duct, because it will have an effect on your warranty, but if you're happy to do do that, at least 3D printing the duct and fitting that is a simple way of trying it because you can revert back to the original one if you wanted to. I've seen no downsides by doing this mod, i.e. I've seen no overheating or any other issues like that. And as always, before you tear these goggles down, do make sure that you are fully aware that you could cause damage. There are some very delicate ribbon cables in here and it isn't a task for the faint-hearted. It is frustrating that we do have to do things like this to improve the performance on features like the anti-fog, but it isn't the only thing you can try, and I would suggest if you're having issues, even consider things like the anti-fog lens wipes. I've been using them on these and the DJIs, and they actually do work very well, although it doesn't last forever, and you do find you will burn through them quite quickly, so if you're going to buy some, make sure you do get yourself a fairly good size pack. Overall, I hope you have found this video interesting. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts in the comment section. As I've said, there is a link to the STL file down there for you as well if you want to try it out. If you have found this video interesting and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content like this. As I've said already, we did buy these goggles and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me in this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.